Hi you guys, my name is Olivia. I am a stay-at-home mama to three. I have a 10-year-old boy and a six-year-old girl, and I also have a six-month-old girl. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my review, and I'm also gonna do a flip through of the poetry and the vocabulary components to Michael Clay Thompson's language arts program, specifically uh, level one, the island level. We just finished up my son's fourth grade year. We're moving into his fifth grade year. We have used MCT level one and MCT level two, and I'm going to be discussing the poetics and the vocabulary today because I had questions about those when I shared on um, just the fact that we use the MCT curriculum in our household. I have a whole video going over the grammar and the writing and how we use this curriculum. Um, I will post that down below for level one, the island level. We did wrap up the level two for grammar and writing as well. It is definitely different than level one and I was not expecting how much different it was going to be and that was kind of a journey doing that. I mean, it's it's given to you in the same way, but it is heavier. So if you guys want a review on that, I will try to put one of those together if you are interested in going into level two for MCT. Some of the things you're gonna get with the poetics and vocabulary that's consistent with the rest of the curriculum is that it is presented to you in um, like a conversational um, narrative type way versus a uh, planned out lesson. So this style does not work for everybody. It's gonna be the same way with the poetics especially. It's a little bit different with vocabulary and you'll see that in the flip through. And with MCT, there are seven levels and so uh, there are seven levels available of also the poetry and the vocabulary components. The suggested like age range for level one is I think third through fifth grade is what they say on the website, we did start level one in third grade, and I would say that it was on grade level for my third grader at the time, but you could utilize this curriculum, both the poetics and the vocabulary. I would say for any upper elementary through middle school and junior high aged kiddos, for sure, because it is in depth and you do come away with a lot of knowledge using this. And so I would not hesitate about starting with MCT level one if you had say like a fifth, a sixth, a seventh or an eighth grader um, because you're gonna come away with a lot of knowledge to the point where I'm not even concerned with purchasing MCT anymore after my son finished the level two because I just don't think it's necessary to know to dig that much deeper into grammar um, than what we covered already. And that's definitely the same for poetics. So let me talk about the poetics component first. First of all, I did not go as in depth with poetry as this curriculum had you go. Um, I would say like junior high probably, and even some into high school. And I took all honors and AP classes. So you get a lot with this poetics program. It was really, really fun. My son had a lot of fun with it. You're gonna go over um, figures of speech, meter, rhyme scheming, other poetic techniques, and um, it's a really full curriculum. The way that it's presented to you is they're going to bring up a topic, chat about how the topic is used, and then have a couple different pieces from classic poetry, and even some that Michael Clay Thompson created himself to use as examples to see how those um, poetic techniques are used in real life. I did not buy the level two for um, the music of the hemispheres, the poetic portion, because I don't think that it's necessary to go that in depth again um, before high school. Like, and that's just the level one. The way that I saw how in depth it went from level one to level two with the grammar and writing, I can only imagine the depth <laughs> that you're gonna get into with the poetry. And I just don't think that that's necessary again. Not that I don't think, that poetry is not necessary and we will not be utilizing um, different pieces of poetry in the rest of our curriculum. Just as far as analyzing poetry, I really don't think that you'll need to go any deeper than what you go with MCT level one. And I also think that the amount that you learn, you're going to be able to carry that knowledge <laughs> For several years to come. So if you don't think that you um, are ready for like a poetics program specifically in third grade, I think it's okay and that you're not 
necessarily missing out on anything and you can definitely impose this in the different grades, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, like I said. With the poetry and the vocabulary, I would say that these two components are a lot easier to lesson plan and teach than the grammar and the writing. If you are familiar with MCT or you've looked through MCT yourself or you've even watched my videos or other videos on the Michael Clay Thompson language arts curriculum, a lot of people are kind of stuck with how to teach it in the first place because it does not come with lesson plans. And you'll see in the flip through that um, the way that poetry and vocabulary are split up, it just is easier to present to your student. And I would highly suggest utilizing all of the teacher resources in the back of the book that are kind of hidden. I mean, they're not because it says teacher resources and then there's a bunch of stuff in the back. But when you open up the front of the book, there's not like a lesson plan where it's like, do this on day one and then read this and this on the next day. And then with this, do like, it's kind of suggested to, okay, now write some of this one of these days. And then there's some examples and some more story and then kind of write, try doing, putting this together. But in the back, there's actual pieces that you can work with. And so I'll show you again, like I said, in the flip through, but really heavily utilize, read through it in the first place. So then you're familiar with what each of the curriculums have. Something else that's consistent with both the poetics and the vocabulary, again, that I mentioned in my other video, is we, I only purchase the teacher manual versions and not student version and teacher version for any of the level one components for the language arts program, except for the practice workbook when it came to like a four level analysis, but you won't need to use that unless you're using the grammar and the writing portion of it. But as far as the poetics version and the vocabulary version, I 100% think that it is not necessary to purchase both the teacher and the student components to the programs. One, um, because the, the books are 98% the same. Every single page is identical in the student and the teacher workbook um, manual laid out exactly, except in some of the teacher um, pages, there's like little bubbles of like, ask your student this question after you've read it, or, um, you know, like give him some examples of this on another page. And so this is a really expensive curriculum and I did not find it necessary that my son needed his own book, especially when I'm sitting next to him and teaching him in the first place, like together, this wasn't something I just handed him and I walked off. We just did those things together. Also, the teacher stuff is, the teacher manual is the one that has all of the extra resources in the back of the book anyway, so that's really the only one I needed. So if you're wanting to save yourself a month, if you are wanting to save yourself some money, at least for level one, I would not, I don't think it's necessary to purchase both teacher and student pieces. For both the poetry and the vocabulary components, I think you can absolutely use them independently. Like if you're just looking for a vocabulary program or you were just looking for a poetics program, I think you can absolutely purchase both of these programs or one of the programs and utilize them in your homeschool without getting the full package. You're not missing, um, it's not gonna seem like lost or out of place if you decide not to use the grammar and the writing portions of the language arts curriculum. So if you're not wanting to buy the whole entire um, curriculum and set, you don't have to. These are independent of each other and you don't need the grammar and the writing portion to work in the poetics and the vocabulary. The way that I worked it was I did grammar and then I started writing. As we were starting writing, then I started adding in the um, four level analysis, the practice sheets a couple times a week with my son. And then the first summer after third grade, we did the first half of the music of the hemispheres, which is the poetry component. And that's because we just do lighter things in the summer. I don't do a full heavy load in the summertime for my kiddos. And then it was time to start our core work in the fall. So we paused it and then we picked it back up this last, this summer that we are currently in right now to finish up the second half of the poetry portion. And it worked just fine splitting it up. And that's because all of the MCT pieces are heavy and rigorous and I just didn't need that load of doing them all together. It would probably be easier to fit them in if you were doing other curriculums and you wanted to do poetry side by side, but you definitely, I mean, I'm sure there's lots of families that are also capable of doing writing and grammar and poetry and vocabulary all together as well, but because 
you go so in depth with each one of the components. I like to split it up and I like to focus on one thing at a time. I did do the poetry and the vocabulary together the first year and we finished the vocabulary that first summer. It is not a heavy curriculum whatsoever. So to move on to the vocabulary portion, I can definitely see purchasing and continuing to purchase the different vocabulary levels as we go up, depending on what other curriculum I'm using and what the load of those curriculums are and what kind of vocabulary is worked into the other curriculums. But if I'm looking for a vocabulary program specifically, I would definitely suggest looking into MCT and continuing to move up with the levels. I don't feel, I feel like vocabulary is a much more cumulative uh, subject than poetry needs to be, especially because um, vocabulary is just, it's not just um, knowing words. It's also, you utilize it in um, analyzing uh, literature, also analyzing scientific literature. Uh, you also use it in communication for conversations, for argument. So I definitely can see myself continuing to purchase the higher levels of the vocabulary. With the vocabulary, he focuses mostly on uh, Roman, uh, no, on Latin and some Greek stems. And this is because there was a lot of history that was created um, using Roman, ancient Roman history that shaped the way that the world works today and the words we use and the world we see. And so he uses, he focuses on these stems so that when you learn the stems, you then, when you come across other words that you are unfamiliar with and you've never heard before, you're able to kind of work them out in context because you then understand what pieces of the words mean. So I found it really helpful. I come from a heavy science background and I think that um, it is really useful to learn vocabulary that way. I think that there's other ways that you can use and learn vocabulary that are equally as helpful. There's something about understanding the roots of words to kind of understand definitions that just really sticks with you. I remember learning uh, vocabulary this way in one of my AP classes and I can still remember sitting in that class learning the roots and then applying them through lots of different classes through college and life today so yeah I really appreciate the way that vocabulary is taught with this program okay so I'm gonna just get to the flip through MCT is like it's an independent small company published through a very small independent publishing company I'm going to try to be respectful of their copyright rules and not share a bunch of things. I don't want to get in trouble. I was trying to be respectful of this when I made my other video too, discussing the grammar and the writing. So I hope that I can show you in depth enough without compromising the integrity of the company. So I am gonna get into that flip through now. All right, I'm gonna start with the Music of the Hemispheres, which is the Michael Clay Thompson Poetics program through their level one, the island level of their language arts curriculum. And this is just the teacher's manual. Again, I only have the teacher's manual to show you guys because I only purchased the teacher's manual. So when you open this up, your table of contents, these are the different um, techniques you're going to go over for this program. Rhyme, alliteration, meter, stanza, similes and metaphors. And then there's a collection of poems at the end where you can apply some of these techniques and then the teacher resource section. My biggest recommendation for implementing this is to utilize the teacher resource section um, and be familiar with that first before you go in and you start um, trying to apply any of the techniques because this is gonna be a super big help in um, basically your lesson setups. All right, so here's a preface from the author and a poem to start you off with. The music of the hemisphere, he's going to basically go through and um, explain where he's coming from about the importance of poetry, how it's used um, in literature, and like the way that it has lasted so long, the classic pieces of poetry today, and the writing intensive that it takes to make good poetry or good writing. You hear that term a lot from Michael Clay Thompson. So this is a good example of why I only purchased the teacher manual and not the 
student manual to go along with it. If you would purchase the student manual, the this would be exactly the same. You'd open this up, it would be the same size, the same colors, the same words. The only difference are, the only differences are these little blurbs of suggestions for discussion for your kiddos. And if you're gonna sit next to your child and teach them that way anyway, um, I don't see any harm in having them already see these discussion blurbs and then we just use them together. So he starts right in with sounds and utilizing sounds, both vowels and consonants to inspire different effects when reading and going through poems and how different poets used uh, the techniques of sounds to uh, inspire some sort of feeling in their poetry. And then there are going to be, like here's an example, they use Shakespeare and the way that they use different sounds for different characters in different scenes. And again, the bubbles give you some suggestions for furthering discussion. You're gonna see a lot of these QR codes um, throughout the book. And when you scan it, Michael Clay Thompson is recording, it's a recording of Michael K. Thompson's audio of the poem. So sometimes it can be hard to hear the rhyme or um, hear the inflection of the way that the poem is supposed to be said in. And so he does a good job of giving you the example that you needed for the lesson, if it's not something you're familiar with by yourself. Let me tell you, my kiddo had the best time when I would tell him, okay, so let's go over this poem. Why don't you read it? and try to find the meter or the rhyme scheme that um, the lesson is trying to teach you. Trying to talk in the accent that <laughs> I said the um, poet would probably have based off of where they came from. And it was just a really fun way to um, make play with the lesson. And I highly encourage you to attempt to get silly and do things in an accent because a lot of these come from a lot of these poems come from um, non-American authors. But before I go into this first technique, let me skip to the teachers, <laughs> the teacher resource section. And you have some more communication from Michael Clay Thompson himself, some different ways to utilize what's going on back here. He has some suggestions for when you're in this chapter, things to talk about and things to do. When you're actually in the chapter as well, it will also have suggestions outside of this, but this is just um, a way to really explore each one of these poetic techniques um, and go more in depth with your lesson. So you're gonna see this for all of the different techniques he goes into in the book. Uh, like I said, there's a poetry pretest and a poetry post-test and then the answer key for that. And then these are some practice poems that you can use. So here is some suggestions of utilizing the poem and this is going over different sounds. Here's an example of the poem going over different, um, what you learn with the rhymes. And you're going to be looking at the poem and applying it that way. And he has that for all of the techniques. Okay, so let's look just a little bit into the rhyme situation. Okay, he's going to give an example poem and this one is going to be Emily Dickinson and how Emily Dickinson utilized end rhyme in this poem. There's not just end rhyme in poetry and he goes over some different examples of different sorts of rhymes with different poems. But this is basically what you're going to see. You're going to see an element he wants to teach. There's going to be an example poem and then he's going to um, give you different pieces of the poem to look at in that example. I like that there's not too much text on a page. I really appreciate that because this is um, a new concept for my kiddo and it makes it not so busy and not so heavy. And it also makes the section not so heavy as well. So rhyme and then there's going to be alliteration and this is what you go through for rhyme. And some people might think that that's not a whole lot, but you do go into such great depth with it and he builds. So you're going to talk about rhyme here. And then you're going to talk about alliteration, but you're going to be talking about those different sorts of rhyming techniques within and using the alliteration. And then to meter, you're then going to be using the alliteration and the rhyme within learning with the meter as well. So it kind of accumulates that way. All right. I know I didn't flip through a ton of it. 
Um, hopefully that gave you a good idea of what you're gonna get with this. It's not flowery, it's not really kitty with a bunch of bright colors. It really focuses on the information and it's not too distracting and he uses really clear examples of what he wants you to see with the element that he is teaching and I really appreciate this. So I wanted to give a little bit of an example of kind of how I go about having my son practice what's in the book. One of the suggestions was to write a poem using some sort of foot and meter. Uh, obviously this is something you will be learning in it. So if you don't understand what you're looking at now, that's okay. But this is just my son's fourth grade notebook from School Nest. So for these dotted sides, no matter what we're doing, because I also use this for different pieces of his language arts, I tell him this is your brainstorming side and then this is your writing side. He obviously very clearly had an example in mind that he wanted to utilize and he apparently didn't need to do very much brainstorming. So we're talking about a Zelda battle. A Zelda battle. And I just wrote up here what I wanted him to do. This was straight out of the book. And then he just writes it here. So this is kind of what we did for a lot of the uh, suggestions and examples and work. All right, building language is much more self-explanatory. There's not a whole lot of the teacher resources in the back that you need to utilize, but I'll show you how we used this. So he's gonna talk about Rome, ancient Rome specifically, a little bit of the history and the way that they um, used vocabulary to name different things that they built or different ideas that they used and how those words shaped the way that we use English today and um, the way that a lot of the world looks today. So I'm going to flip to an example. This is STEM lesson two. So they're gonna go through Latin stems and that's what they're gonna use to teach some of the different roots that you're gonna be learning. And this example is sub. So they're going to tell you what the stem is, what it means, and then some different examples of words that utilize sub. So like I said, pretty self-explanatory. We read through this together. This is also something he does often with the vocabulary is he brings out the different uh, usages of the word sub in lots of different language and not just English to kind of show you how language can be related. You can see here he's using it in poem format. He's using um, a, some literary elements here. And then you go into the next STEM lesson. So like a lot of his work, the writing, the amount of writing on the page is not a lot. It's very minimal. It's not distracting. I think you can purchase this in color. I don't, I personally don't think that that's necessary though it would have been pretty. Um, it's just more of a price. So it's really approachable because like I said, there's just not a whole lot on the page and um, we would just do one of these a week. I could definitely see doing this quicker um, and doing it, you know, like as a unit where you do a couple a week and you shrink how long it takes to get through this. Um, there is a quiz. There's a couple quizzes in the back that you can use um, if that's something that you're interested in. Something else that we did to record what we were learning is I just had my kiddo make his own vocabulary note cards. So he wrote the stem on one side and then I had him write what the explanation was, or the definition on the back, and then an example using the stem in a word. Um, and this worked really well. You could do this in lots of ways. You could have them write it in a sentence. So there's not a whole lot, but once you get to Caesar's English, it really picks up. The information he has in here, um, the examples he uses and the stories he uses, they're really fun and it held my son's attention. So this is kind of like a no brainer sort of thing, but I know people were interested in it. So I definitely wanted to give you guys a look into it. Okay, you guys, I really hope that that was helpful. I hope you guys got a good view of it. Um, just to recap a little bit, I think that they work incredibly well. You are left with tons of knowledge and I don't think you need to start it in third grade if you don't think that your kiddos are ready for it. And I think that you can definitely utilize the poetry and the vocabulary from higher elementary through middle school and junior high. Um, it's expensive. I only bought the teacher versions of it. I think that they can be used independently as programs 
themselves and you don't need to purchase the entire MCT curriculum for language arts to utilize them. And I would absolutely purchase both one of these programs again and implement them with my other kids as well. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about the curriculum, go ahead and leave those down below. And um, otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.